Well, welcome back to the Piney Woods Homestead, y'all. You can probably hear the tractor warming up in the background. We're going to use it today. We're going to set up the scalding tank so that we can get a pig scalded here in a couple of days. We're going to barbecue one for Christmas, y'all. Guys, thanks for stopping in at the Piney Woods Homestead. Hit that like and subscribe if you haven't. And if you have, as always, y'all, we appreciate you. y'all got a spot right here in wood yard number two that's going to be just perfect for scalding last year i'll show you when we get over to where the tank sat right now the vat where we did it at but y'all it was a it was not a good spot it was too wet up here it's kind of higher and drier and so that's going to make this process a lot better this year So the idea with a scalding vat, y'all, if you're gonna do this on your own homestead, is to get your vat up off the ground high enough you can build a fire under it. And so that's why I've got a few cinder block out here. And it's cinder block that will never be used for anything structural in their future because once you put heat from a fire to these cinder block, it weakens them. They're no good for anything else. But what you're using it for, so we will use these just for fire projects from this point forward. All right guys, so our vat is gonna sit right on top of these center blocks and there are 12 of them right here. I believe that's right. Four times three is 12. So there's 12 block here open on one side. And that's because I don't want any heat or fire on me from the other side and I'll explain why when we get this a little bit further along. Now this is our scalding vat. If you watched any of the videos last year this time, I took a, I think it's 275 gallon oil drum, cut the top out of it, burn it out, built me a fire inside of it to get any residual fuel oil that was still in there out and I've been using it. it was about 30 gallons of fuel oil in this thing when the boy gave it to me and I've been using that to keep the sawmill lubricated the blade but anyways I know get this on the forks we'll get it over there and get it sat up on top of those 12 center blocks
it's coming together exactly how I wanted it to. Two courses high, a solid back on it. The reason for that solid back, y'all, is we're gonna be working from this side and I don't want the heat from the fire or too much smoke being on us. And on this side over here, get down here, got a good firebox in here. And I'm gonna use pine slabs. Cut some down and y'all, that's gonna put off a lot of heat to get this water up to the right temperature and y'all speaking of temperature 150 degrees that's where you want it at just like scalding chickens y'all it seems to work perfect that way you don't get it so hot that you set the hair on the hog but it's just right for pulling it off and an old timey way i know and when your water's hot enough and i've done it and it works I've, i have done this and then check with the thermometer and it's pretty much dead on if you can run your finger through the water three times and you can't do it four times, that means your water's perfect. And sometimes y'all, when we're doing this, I even throw in some green pine needles. I don't know if it helps, but an old timey way of doing it was throwing in that and help with the hair to slip. Could be something to it because of the nature of the pine tree and the turpentine qualities that it has. Could have something to do with the solvent factor in it. All right, let me go grab one more thing and I'm going to kind of set this thing up and give you a mock rundown of how this is going to work for us. All right, so let me show you how this is going to work. We've got the pallet on the forks for the tractor. The pig will come over here on these. On the scalding tank itself, we have some chains that's attached to the far side and that allows a person to step back here behind the pot far enough away because we've got long chains away from that fire while somebody else is helping to roll the pig onto these chains and then the pig is lowered down into the water with these chains i think they just heard that i heard them back there hollering over feed maybe they know one of them's getting ready to go in this thing but but that's the gist of it. You put the pig in, slosh him around. We use a garden hoe to slosh him around and even the garden hoe to see if the hair is ready. And then what we do when that hair is ready, and it don't take but a few minutes, y'all, sloshing that pig around. And I'll stand up here on top of this pallet, use the chain, slosh the pig around. We'll actually pull him straight back up onto this pallet. And then we can work from a decent working height to pull the hair, scrape the hair. We've got some old bell scrapers that we use and mason jar lids. They probably work better than anything. And once we get all of that hair off y'all, we'll actually, I'll take an old hickory and I'll shave that pig, any of the fine hairs that are left and I'll just shave them right off. And then we can hang it up, dress it out, get it on ice, get it ready for the fire the next day. Let me try and touch on a couple of things if you're wanting to do this yourself and you've never done it that you're going to want to do. Fill this tank up, depending on the size of the pig that you're doing. The one we're doing is probably 75 pounds. He's a runt, y'all. He'll be fairly simple to do, but this tank could probably have close to half way full of water. And it'll take us probably at least an hour to get that up to temperature cooking a fire under it. Maybe, maybe less, but keep your thermometer handy and don't let your water get too hot if it does throw you a five gallon bucket of some cold water in there to get it back because you don't want that hair to set then you can't get it out y'all other than just burning it off and i don't like the smell of hair burning it's it's horrible so we scrape it off but about halfway full on the water just so that you can you don't have to fully submerge the pig you can roll that pig around in that water the main thing is you do want to try to keep him off the bottom because you're not trying to cook the pig. Just keep him off the bottom the best you can with your chains. You're not going to be able to keep every bit of it off, but that is the concept to try to keep it up off the bottom so that the fire is not in direct contact 
on to the pig from the metal to transfer the heat. Because you, like I said, you're not trying to cook it. You're just trying to scald it. Now, if you do not have a tractor like we do, you can just put pallets around your center blocks. That way you can climb up on top, roll your pig in and out. <clears throat> you should only have to put it in the water one time, y'all. Keep you a bucket handy because you may need to slosh some water on that pig as you're working it to keep helping to loosen that hair if you got a, a trouble spot, something like that. Um, so you don't have to have a tractor to do it. And some people, I've seen them do it in 55 gallon drums before, like half the pig at the time. But y'all, you can find these old oil, fuel oil tanks all the time for either free or dirt cheap. Take you a hacksaw, uh, reciprocating saw, cut that top out, burn it out. These things work so much better because you can put the whole pig down in there at one time. There's none of this lifting it in and out of a hot pot, um, relying on hydraulics, something that can mess up. The only thing we're, we are relying on hydraulics, yes, to hold this up, but if something were to fail, it ain't got far to fall. And I'm pretty sure that we can get out of the way pretty quick, quick enough so that nobody gets hurt. All right, I hope that is a fairly thorough example of how to scald a pig. And I know we're not showing you the scalding the pig. That's just some stuff that we don't do on this channel, y'all. I, I know a lot of channels do, but we just have chosen not to do that sort of thing. But we do want to show you how it's done, at least the setup. And you notice my wood burning barrel over here. That's what we'll cook coals down on. We'll actually set up more cinder block. I've got a big piece of heavy metal, expanded metal that goes on it. And we'll shovel coals under this pig. It, it probably won't take six to eight hours to cook this pig because he's not that big. But we'll cook him slow and he'll be some mighty fine eating on Christmas, y'all. Let me have those warm gloves. <laughs> y'all want to give a Christmas shout out to everyone that has subscribed to the channel we really appreciate all of you and i'm really appreciating mark right now from a few hours away in stokes county here in north carolina he's basically a family member at this point yeah <laughs> he sent me a pair of gloves y'all we had done a video a while back where my gloves were just had holes all in them from doing firewood and he sent me a nice pair of gloves with this what do you call that stuff Fleece. fleece yeah lined and they are so warm but they're not going on the firewood because that firewood's hard on gloves yeah, it is these are going to be my saw milling gloves yeah. and he sent me every year he sends me a blums farmer almanac from up at the hardware store in his area and he said his i think he, him and his his grandmother he always remembers her getting one i think is what he told me but i always look forward to this every year yes so. <laughs> we're very appreciative and and our buddy geezer that geezer in the woods we always look forward to this because he always sends us a, yep. a calendar with all of his pictures of we we like old roy this yeah. is this is roy yeah and his channel geezer. is geezer in in the woods the woods D A. yeah he's up at ohio and i enjoy watching geezer i've learned a lot about rigging He'll say he's not an expert, but he's way more of an expert than I am. He's very creative with it, too. And um, I just like watching him and trying to uh, encourage him as well. So, Geezer, we know that you are getting ready to go under the knife and have some work done on your bike. We're praying for you that everything goes well. And then, of course, we got so many Christmas cards from... Many people. Many people. Um they watch y'all yeah, they watch and we appreciate it it really makes our day to get um something from you know you guys that we don't even we've never met in person but we feel like we know you and so yep. all the cards are hung up on the cabinet yep. in the living room so. and, our, and our christmas tree is outside <laughs> y'all because we didn't want the cats well, climbing them the two older cats are are fine but the two the kittens, two kittens are We'd have had a disaster <laughs> in the house. And yeah. so I said, let's just put that Charlie Brown tree outside. Yeah. And I took an old five gallon gas can, filled it up with water and stuck the tree in it. So that works, repurposing. Yep. Guys, y'all have a good day, a great week and a Merry Christmas. Yeah. We are extremely thankful for all of you. We're thankful for Christ that he was willing to come in the flesh, die on the cross, 
raised again for your sins and mine. We're very thankful for Christ and all y'all. Y'all have a good day, a great week, and Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Too high. We'll see you on the next one, guys. We're going to go fire up the wood splitter. She's got work to do. Yeah. <laughs> Break's over. That's right. <laughs>